cross-border commercial mediation, the use of information and digital technology is often necessary due to the physical distance between the parties. There are many advantages of using information and communication technology, such as online video conferencing platforms when mediating a cross-border dispute. One of the greatest advantages of mediating on conferencing platforms is that people can join, no matter where they are located, through a tablet, mobile phone, PC or laptop connected to the Internet. Digital platforms are flexible, effective, fast and inexpensive. Also, they allow the emotional side of the dispute to be processed more quickly. In fact, the intermediation of the so-called fourth party, that is the platform, may help the parties involved in the dispute be more reflective, less confrontational, and more open to dialogue. They help create a comfort zone. Participants will most likely connect from the comfort of their homes or offices, or in any case, from familiar environments. Parties will now have to face the possible inconvenience of traveling to a physical place. In a sense, the online environment reassures the parties and consequently the discussions and negotiations can be more relaxed. Also, the use of online conferencing platforms stimulates synthesis, so the parties will focus more on the most significant aspects of the dispute. Most video conferencing platforms offer the possibility to use a chat room. This tool can be used by the mediator to control and manage the conversation between the parties in a more organized and productive way. The mediator can invite the parties to use the chat room in case they have questions, concerns or clarifications to make without interrupting the verbal discussion between the parties and the mediator. This allows for a better flow of communication and allows the mediator to deal with the items in the chat room later in the discussion. Finally, a unique aspect of online mediation is the possibility of seeing yourself on a computer screen. In fact, the video camera reproduces the effect of the mirror through which both the parties and the mediator can appreciate in real time the way they present themselves and the nonverbal language expressed by their face and body, though having the chance to correct, adjust and improve their performance from time to time. Certainly, it could be valuable and interesting for the mediator at the end of the mediation to discuss with the parties their experience with the online platform and understand the impact that technology had on them and their emotions. The use of online mediation to resolve cross-border commercial disputes may, however, present some disadvantages. One, the use of technology in online mediation can make the parties feel less empathetic because of the lack of direct interpersonal contact between the parties. Also, in face-to-face -face mediation, by observing each other, the parties can better perceive the unspoken and read the non-verbal language of the other side. However, the rapid technological evolution of the last decade for the sharpness of the images transmitted by the cameras to high-speed internet and the possibility of connecting PC to larger screens has allowed even the non-verbal language to be grasped by all participants in online meetings. The further technological evolution that we are most likely going to experience in the near future will allow online participants to have the feeling of sharing the same space and time even they are physically far away from each other. Two, some could argue that online mediation favors the parties with IT competence compared to the parties who lack such knowledge. 3. Another disadvantage of online mediation is represented by the risk that the mediator is perceived by the parties as someone who is excessively controlling the process, since he or she must force the parties to respect the strict rules of online communication. For example, inviting the parties to keep the microphones off 
when they are not speaking, or encouraging them to use the chat room to address issues or concerns or to ask questions, or giving direction to the parties on how to access the separate rooms. Four, the participation of multiple parties in online mediation can represent an obstacle to productive communication. Imagine several people talking at the same time in a virtual environment. Experience has shown that this aspect of online mediation is complicated to manage. It might be desirable to carry out several separate sessions to deal with the interests, needs, and concerns of all the parties involved in the dispute in a more constructive way. 5. Online mediation is only suitable for certain matters and disputes, in particular those that do not require special investigations. However, from our experience, we believe that every dispute can be mediated online. It will only be necessary to adopt technology available to the contingent needs of the parties. 6. In online mediation, it might be easier for the party to disengage from the discussion and even leave the mediation with a simple click. However, a trained mediator will help keep the parties engaged and involved in the online process. A properly trained mediator will be able to guide the parties in the virtual reality of online mediation and show them his or her support and expertise to make them feel comfortable in using digital technology to communicate. Certainly, one or more preparatory sessions are recommended during which the mediator and the parties can test their competence and the technology they are using PC, mobile phones, the internet, for example. Though this might depend on the party's availability and their ability to use the information and the digital technology available. Also, the mediator can use these preparatory meetings to answer any questions the parties may have about the process. Therefore, an online mediator should give particular attention at the beginning of the process to any technical issues experienced by the parties, such as the presence of firewalls that do not allow the parties to access the video conferencing platform, or the internet speed that may slow down the transmission of audio and video data. In case the parties experience any technical issues, the mediator should support them in solving the problem or refer them to an IT expert that can help them resolve the issue. We can say that the mediators are the custodians of the communication flow, and this is why they need to pay close attention to communication, especially in an online environment. An aspect that should not be underestimated in online mediation is when one of the parties goes silent. Silence can be misunderstood, more so in a virtual setting. In addition to being a manifestation of lack of interest, frustration, and a desire to interrupt the communication, it could be a sign of distress due to the aversion of one of the parties to virtual technology. In this case, it will be advisable for the mediator to meet with the parties separately to find out the reasons why the parties have gone silent. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, online mediation has become the new normal, as more mediation sessions have been forced to take place on platforms such as Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, etc. There are good reasons to expect that virtual mediation will continue into the foreseeable future. This is why mediators need to learn some valuable tips on how to run online mediation smoothly and professionally. Of course, the virtual setting is different from gathering in a room, which, as we said, may change the dynamics of the mediation itself. In a virtual mediation, all participants are in the same size box on a computer screen. The mediator must suggest how the parties should manage the virtual space. The mediator should check the microphone and test how his or her voice sounds to others. You should check the camera angle and view. Ideally, a fair and neutral angle would be at zero degree straight shot with the camera pointed directly at the mediator's face, not too far away or too close to the screen. 
The mediator should seek out natural light, which according to many experts is always the best way to illuminate oneself in a video call. Also, he should not sit with a window behind him to avoid backlit. To light the room if natural light may be lacking, it is advisable to install a LED bulb in a desk lamp and point the desk lamp towards the wall in front of the person. This way, the light from the lamp will bounce off the wall, creating a larger source than if the lamp were pointed directly at the face of the person. The mediator should suggest to the parties the use of headphones or earphones as they stimulate concentration and eliminate external noise. Also, sound quality is usually greatly improved by using earbuds, headphones, or supplemental speakers. The use of headphones can also prevent that other people who are not participating in the virtual meeting listen to any confidential information shared in the mediation. For example, office colleagues or family members. In this way, confidentiality is better guaranteed. During the online mediation, the mediator should uh, try to keep the parties engaged. Unlike a physical meeting where separated parties can open the door and enter the conference room, electronic breakout rooms can be very isolating. However, when parties are left in a breakout room, they cannot see or hear what other parties are doing or if they're still present. At the same time, they can be easily distracted and begin working on some other task. To minimize this isolation and distraction, it is important to keep the parties engaged by meeting together, asking questions to get participants talking, giving assignments when not in the same room, and sending chat messages when visits to a room are delayed. Maintaining concentration in a virtual environment is certainly more demanding than in a real environment. Therefore, the mediator will always have to keep an eye on the clock, take breaks, and limit the duration of both joint and separate meetings. It is also important to set the ground and participation rules early in the mediation. And this concludes the module on online dispute resolution. This module has provided a general overview of online dispute resolution, including a comprehensive definition of ODR. It also looked at the most used ODR methods to resolve cross-border disputes. It identified advantages and disadvantages of online mediation and gave some tips on what to do or not to do when mediating online. Well, thank you for joining me in this module and I hope you enjoyed the lectures.